Okay, in this video, I want to spend a few moments showing another method to synchronize variables in Factor Talk Optics if we're going to go between two different comm stations. And in a previous video, when I did an example of using optics as a headless unit, uh, we used a method that was basically creating an, uh, an event, um, like a change event. So if there was a change in the value of the variable, it would trigger moving the value to another tag. Um, I want to show a different method um, in this example. So here, um, from the previous video, I was kind of moving data from the Micro 800 to the control objects. And this time, I'm going to go in reverse. And just to show you what I've got set up here, um, simply have a Logix program running in my Echo emulator. And all it's doing is creating a sine wave, um, a period of 10. So, um, uh, and I'm taking the absolute value of that and passing, I'm going to pass that basically value or that tag to the Micro 800. On the Micro 800, I'm basically going to be taking in, um, I got a value called real zero one, where I will use optics to move that sine wave into real zero one. And then just to show you that something's actually happening, I have my simulator running and I have a, an analog output card here that will actually show a number. So I'm going to take this value and move it into this output, right? Just to kind of show now, um, so if we go into um, optics to make this work, I've already kind of brought in the tags. All, all I've done is created two. Um, let me collapse some of this here. So I've created two uh, comm stations. One is my uh, microcontroller driver and one is my RA Ethernet IP driver. And I went ahead and brought in the tags already. There's not a lot of tags in this program, but I have a tag called um, sine ABS, which is basically the absolute value of that sine wave. If I click on that, it is a floating point number. Now, what I want to show is I want to take this value and simply move it to the micro 800. And I have my tag here called real zero one. Right now, if I click on this, it just says zero. So if I want to simply move this tag to this tag, well, I'm, I'm, I have the real zero one highlighted and the properties for real zero one, the micro 800 tag is, is right here. I'm just going to take this um, sign ABS and just drag it and move it up up here. So essentially this is saying that, hey, real zero one is going to be equal to whatever the value of sign ABS is. Now, one little other little thing to note here to make this work and I want to click on the dynamic link. I want to go to advanced and I want to change this direction because right now uh, this is showing as a bi-directional method. So basically real zero one can write to the control objects as well as the control objects can write to the real zero one. I want to change that to where it's really only one direction. So just by clicking on that little arrow, I'm showing the arrow going from here to real zero one. And I say close. Now in the previous video around headless or optics as a service, uh, what I wound up doing was I wound up creating an event down here. I went up to, um, to the plus symbol and I said changed event. So that was the previous method. And you know, that's, that method works fine. Um, just that you would have to do that for each individual tag separately. So depending on how many tags you're trying to move, that could become a bit of work. Now, what I want to show is basically how this works. So um, if you recall from that previous video, if you watch that, um, what we found out is that this, this only works um, if there are tags on scan on the screen. So right now, just to, to do it, I have, um, I have a screen created and I'm basically showing my control logic sine wave value and I'm showing you, you know, basically what is getting copied over to the micro 800. And to show you that the micro 800 is actually receiving it, I'm getting a number here in the emulator. 
But if I move to a screen that doesn't have the that sign tag on scan, well, the uh, it no longer moves the current value to the micro 800. So only when the tags are on scan does that actually happen. All right, so I just wanted to show that. Now, um, one thing you could do, you know, so so one one thing possibly if you're trying to do this situation and again, so if you're running headless, you would have no tags on scan essentially. So, um, you know, one way to kind of do this was to use that, you know, changed event method. Um, also, I want to just note that if you were kind of data logging, then that would actually move the tag as well. I do, you know, basically the, the tag is getting read in, in data log. So I just want to show this real quick. If I create a new data logger, and then if I create a new database, and it doesn't matter if I use the embedded or if I use the local influx DB, I'm just going to stick with the embedded for right now. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to go essentially log the control logics tag, the tag, the sine wave tag that's getting, you know, generated in the control logics. So I'm going to come down here to tags, controller tags. And I'm just going to log simply this sign ABS tag. Say next. Now, um, one thing I want to note too is that the the data logger is going to be logging at a rate of one second. Now, if I come back here to my native presentation engine, click on that and show the properties, um, the, dy the dynamic variables are set to 100 milliseconds. So if you so, uh, so I just want to note that here because what you're going to see happen next is going to be kind of interesting. So, um, so all I've done is created a data logger and an embedded database, and I'm logging that control logics tag. So let's go ahead and bring the emulator back online. And again, it goes to the other window. So right now, you know, we're we're tags on scan, things are updating. Now, if I were to switch the screen to, you're going to see that it is continuing to update to the micro 800, but at a much slower rate. And that is because it's because it's being um, logged at once per second. Whereas here we were updating our, our uh, tags at um, 100 milliseconds, right? So if I'm logging a value, then it will be getting updated uh, even if it's working as a headless device uh, and it'll pass you know the values on to the to the other comm station. Now, um, next, what I want to show you is kind of you know uh, the the uh, the other method, and I'm going to go ahead and delete these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete the the data logger and the embedded uh, database because we're not going to really need that at this point. Now, um, what I want to show you is something that came out of the GitHub sample code library. Um, so if you go to, you know, Rockwell has a public GitHub repository with a lot of optics examples. So one of those examples is a Modbus Ether IP example. And the reason why this is um, significant, and I know we're not doing Modbus here, we're, we're doing, you know, basically control logics to micro 800. But what this sample project does is it has a um, right here? Uh, it has a a net logic or a C sharp script that's called variable synchronizer. And essentially, this this is a, a C sharp script that will run in the background that will basically synchronize the tags. And the beauty of it is, there's really nothing for you to do to that logic to the to the code or the script. So if you are not familiar with GitHub, you can come here to this green code button. And if you are using the free version of Optics Studio, then you could just simply download the zip file, unzip the folder, and then just open it up right in Optics Studio. If you're using the pro version of Optics Studio, then you can copy and paste 
this link and open this up as a remote repository, basically. So I've already got that open and I have it in another program here, another optics session. So just to kind of, I'm going to minimize some of this stuff to, uh, to kind of avoid the confusion. Now this, what this example program does is it already had set up two com drivers. One is a Modbus driver and one's an ethernet IP driver. And all they did was they, they had some tags here, you know, bool zero, bool one, bool two, uh, double integer zero, one, two. And then in the Modbus, they have, um, Modbus station and tags, and they had a couple of tags here. Now, if I click on, like, say, the if I go to the control logics station and I click on bool zero, we just see that it's false. And, you know, it's basically reading the values from the control logics. If I click on the bool zero here under the Modbus station, it's essentially linked back to this bool zero. So what they're doing is they're taking this value here and copying it or moving it into the Modbus tag. So the that's the same thing we had just did basically um, going from the control logics to the micro read hunter. Uh, but what's new down here is this net logic. And that is uh, right here, this variable synchronizer um, script. And if I just click on this to get the properties, the way how this works is it's kind of a parameterized uh, C sharp uh, program. And all it wants to know is where are the tags that I'm going to synchronize coming from. And th so it's basically tags to sync. That's what this little identifier here is called. And then uh, if I click on the dynamic link, just to show you where this is linked to, it's actually linked right to the Modbus driver in the tags folder. And again, those are the tags in the tags folder. Now, what's kind of nice about this is I can take this, this C sharp script right out of this sample program. If I can just copy this, I'm just going to say copy. Now I'm going to go back to my other optics application. So this is my, um, this is the one I was just working with. So I'm going to come to my NetLogic folder. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say paste. And now my variable synchronizer is here. Now note that the tags to sync is unresolved. So to resolve that, I'm going to essentially point this to the tag folder of the tags that I want to sync. And that's basically going to be the micro read 100 tag, right? Because again, I'm taking, I want to take the value from the control logics and move it to the micro read 100. So I'm going to use this tag folder right here. So I can take this tag folder and essentially drag it to right there. And that's actually all I have to do. Now, if you do want to see what this script looks like, if you have, um, you know, if you, if you do have, uh, like visual studio code on your computer, you can click that little button there and that'll open up this code editor. And this is, uh, this variable synchronizer.cs and it's basically some C sharp scripting. And again, um, you don't have to do anything to the code here, which is good because I can't claim to be really anybody who's really strong with C sharp. Um, so, but we don't need to have, uh, we don't need to change anything here and we can go ahead and close that down. So, um, just to refresh where we're at, we have, um, you know, we, we got rid of the data logger and the embedded database. And we're still moving sign ABS into real zero one. And we now have our net logic that is going to be basically taking the tags out of the micro 800 and synchronizing them. All right, so we go ahead and we can go ahead and run the emulator and we can watch this work. All right, emulator is open. Now, again, um, this is the tags on scan page, so everything is working great. If I go to screen two, 
my tags are continuing to update at the 100 millisecond um, sample rate. So again, that was pretty nice. I didn't have to do anything. Now, um, we did say originally, you know, about the idea of being headless. To be a headless uh, version of optics, we wouldn't have a native presentation engine at all. So if I go ahead and delete this native presentation engine, just to get rid of that altogether. So now when I run the emulator, there will be no screen to show. And we can see once it gets running that now it's updating. So basically the control logics tags are being passed right into the micro 800. I don't have any HMI component here at all. It's acting completely as a headless gateway or um, acting as optics, as I say, optics as a service. Uh, another way they, they kind of call that. So um, stop the emulator and you can see that we have stopped updating our tags. So just wanted to show that um, so we can, you know, a couple ways we can do this. We can, you know, one, use that, you know, change the vent method, which essentially means we have to go configure each tag separately. Um, we, if we are logging data to our database, then we don't have to really do it either. Uh, we could, you know, because it is actually the tag is getting updated and logged. Um, that also works if you're going to be passing it on to like an MQTT or into, a, um, you know, OPC UA as well. Um, or we can go and use that variable synchronizer C sharp script, uh, that comes out of the, uh, sample code library. Um, off of GitHub. All right, hope this was helpful. Um, you know, if you have some other methods that you've learned, you know, one question might be, you know, which one's the better way to go? Um, you know, change on event versus this variable synchronizer. Um, I honestly don't know if I know the answer to that. So perhaps, you know, out there in the community, if you guys are um, kind of experimenting with this, maybe you can determine which method is the better way to go and share your comments.